Hey everyone, welcome to the ranking. Here's my ranking of Mike Flanagan's movies. Yes, this is another Halloween themed video and I'm going to be talking about Mike Flanagan. Mike Flanagan is a new aged horror director and he's one of my favorites. I think he's one of the best uh, upcoming horror filmmakers out there. He's right there with like James Wan and stuff. I think this guy, he knows his shit. Also Andy Muschietti, yeah, who did it and um, Mama and stuff. Those are these are truly great horror filmmakers. They are the new like Wes Cravens and stuff, and the new John Carpenters. Woo! But yeah, uh, I want to talk about Mike Flanagan because I love his work. I love his movies. Even his weak films are just still just okay films. Like he is yet to make a really bad film, and I'm always excited for the new stuff he's doing. And he's coming out with a new TV show on Netflix this month, so I just thought I'd celebrate that new TV show he's coming out with. Uh, I thought I'd just rank all his movies that he's directed. He's directed six films, and I thought I'd rank all six of those films from my least favorite to my favorite. So yeah, let's get to it. Coming in at number six is Before I Wake. Before I Wake is a pretty uh, meh kind of movie. It has some decent atmosphere. There's a couple scares that get me here and there, and Jacob Tremblay is fine. Thomas Jane is fine, but... The rest of the acting is just okay to me. It's very predictable, very cliched. It has some dumbass jump scares, but I think it's fine for what it is. It's definitely his weakest film, but it's watchable. Coming in number five is Ouija, Origin of Evil. Yes, if y'all remember, I did a review of this movie, uh, and I did a couple years ago, and I really loved, like, the first two acts of this film. The third act lost me. I felt like the third act was even directed by Mike Flanagan. I think the third act is shit. I legit think it's awful. The first two acts are fantastic. If the whole movie was a lot like the first two acts, this movie would be in like my top three favorite uh, Mike Flanagan movies. This might even be my number two. I think it's so good. I love Elizabeth Reeser, Lulu Wilson, and the redhead girl who plays in Oculus. I forget her name, but the three of them are all fantastic. I love how the movie opens, and they, they like rip all these people off. They pretend that like they talk to the dead and stuff, but it's basically all an act to basically rip people off from their money. I think that's kind of cool and interesting and kind of funny. And I love uh, all the scenes with like Lulu Wilson talking to the spirit and stuff to the Ouija board is all creepy, unsettling shit. And then when the priest at the school gets all involved and stuff, a lot of it feels very much an homage to like the exorcist. There's even an amazing scene when he gets out of the car and they do this big shot. And it's almost like an identical shot of the exorcist, the poster for the exorcist when the priest is outside the house. I loved it. I thought that was all genius and stuff, and there were some genuinely tension-filled scenes and some creepy shit in this film in the first two acts. The third act just loses me. It just gets into this silly, stupid, like, demon movie with a lot of rah, rah, a lot of demons coming out, people dying left and right, one girl, the, the girl going to the mental hospital, then her sister running on the roof and getting her out of the hospital, and just, there's so much dumb things in this movie. Near the ending, it just took me out of the film. I still think this movie is good. I think if you just stop watching it after, like, the hour, hour and ten minute mark, then the movie's great. But the ending is just so dumb. I, I would have loved this movie so much if the ending wasn't so stupid. But I still think it's a good movie because I love the first two acts so much. So I'd still recommend it, but caution of the ending. <laughs> Coming in at number four, it's an older one of his movies, older-ish, and that's Absentia. Absentia is a really great film. It's got that very good, low-budget, bleak feel, and I really enjoy it. These actors are all great in this film. The ending has a very good twist that was very good, very suspenseful. There's a lot of, like, you know, white-knuckling in this film. You're just like, mm because you, know you don't know what's going to happen and stuff. The movie does take its time. Some people might think this movie is very boring, but it allows you to, uh, you know, uh, have all this time with these main characters and stuff and figure out and establish what's happening and what has happened to a certain person. And I think this is a really great film with a really good ending. And, yeah, it's a really cool, low-budget sort of feel. And, yeah, I enjoy it. Number, number three is Gerald's Game. Gerald's Game was so fucking good. This is a... Uh, Really great Stephen King adaptation. I heard the book wasn't even all that great, but this movie's fantastic. Uh, Carla Gugino is so amazing in this film. She gives an Oscar-worthy performance. She wasn't nominated last year, which is surprising. I thought she was so good, so compelling, and I loved watching her character. She's like tied to this bed this whole movie, and then she, they go into like the backstory of her character. It's almost very uh, Dolores Claiborne-esque and everything, and then... 
It turns very spooky and stuff. There's like this weird guy that haunts her every night when he like stands over her bed. It's like this really skinny pale guy having this box in his hand. You don't know if it's in her imagination or if it's real or not. Then you find out it is real and it makes it all the more creepy and stuff. There's also a dog that's eating her dead husband on the ground and he's trying to eat her. There's a lot of weird shit in this film. Bruce Greenwood's in it, he's great. He's also in the movie as her husband, but also her subconscious, her bad side. And there's a lot of also uh, homages to the movie Hush as well, and I thought that was really cool. And I think this is a really great film, really thrilling film that actually did terrify me in some moments, and I think this is a really great film, and one of uh, Mike Flanagan's better films. Coding number two is Oculus. I thought of putting this at number three, but I think this movie is a little bit better than Gerald's Game. I think because the ending is a little better, because it leaves you more with this very thought-provoking idea of insanity or spirits. Is he crazy or is there actual spirits with his mirror and stuff? And the movie just puts you on this like really fucked up adventure with this family and they basically all went mad with this mirror and everything. They go to the past, the present, and even the future and it's just so insane and crazy and so fucked up. It's so entertaining to watch. I love the performances by the two leads, even the younger versions of them. I love that Kay Sackoff was the mom. And she does a great job. There's some disturbing shit in this film, and I, I absolutely love this film. And I thought it was truly compelling, really creepy, and it's got a great ending, and yeah, love it. And my number one favorite Mike Flanagan movie is, obviously, Hush. Hush is my favorite. Everyone knows it's my favorite. I've gushed about this movie to death. It's so great. Kate, Kate Siegel is so good. John Gallagher Jr. is great. It's about this deaf girl. She's a writer. She's in the middle of nowhere in this cabin in the woods. And there's this guy played by John Gallagher Jr. He basically hunts people for fun. And basically, he tries to hunt her. It's like a cat and mouse game. The two of them in the middle of nowhere. She can't scream. There's no power. She can't get out. So she has to go toe to toe with this hunter. And that's our story. It's fucking badass. It's so intense. Sometimes I always say simplistic is always the better way to go, and this movie is very simple. It's a deaf girl in the middle of nowhere, in the woods, in a cabin, being hunted by a guy. She has to, sur has to survive. That's the movie, and it's a great movie. It's intense, it's well directed, it's well shot, really well acted. It has one of my favorite final girls with the character Maddie, and yeah, I fucking love this movie. I've talked about it a lot. It's so great. It's Mike Flanagan's best film, in my opinion. So yeah, that was my ranking of Mike Flanagan's movies from my least favorite time favorites. Say so in the comments section below, please tell me, did you agree with this ranking? If not, give me guys a ranking of all of Mike Flanagan's movies. And if you haven't seen any of his movies, or if you haven't seen all of his movies, what is your favorite Mike Flanagan movie? Comment below, let me know. And as always, for this video, please subscribe to his channel and join the dark side.